Coming up on Relatables. Yeah. I've got a couple more. Things girls love but don't admit. Baby talk. Ooh. Ooh. Can you do it? Um, what do you want me to say? <laughs> Give me a sentence. <laughs> um, say like, hey, cupcake, I want to have dinner. Okay. Hey, cupcake, I want to have some dinner. Do you want to go get dinner with me? Do you want to go get some dinner? <laughs> hey, cupcake, I want to go get some dinner. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Do what you wanna do. Be what you wanna be. Relatables. You are listening to Relatables, season two, episode twenty. <laughs> Woohoo, guys! You know what episode this is? The finale. The finale of season two. The last one. The last one. It's not none of that Game of Thrones shit. Where the last episode shit. This is going to be the best yeah. episode. <laughs> That we've ever done. I literally didn't even finish Game of Thrones. I, I did season seven. I haven't watched any of season eight. Because it was terrible. And, and the reason is because you got ahead of me yeah. and said it was pretty shit. Yeah. So I was like, well, I'm not going to waste my time because they're long. Literally, literally. And I was obsessed with the show. And now, ever since I've done that, every show that I've watched since then, I either don't watch the last season or I don't watch the last episode. That's weird. I haven't watched the last episode That's of really weird Mandalorian. Of what? Haven't that tastes good. Still haven't watched last episode. Of that. I haven't watched any of Osaka yet. Yeah. Right. None of that shit. But guys, last episode. Last episode. And if you guys don't know, we mentioned it last episode. We'll be in Bali when this comes out. <laughs> Bali. And we're actually going to be editing this on the plane. So right now I'm going to, I talk about energies and stuff a lot, Jake. I'm going to radiate my energy that I'm experience, like feeling and experiencing right now. It's going through the microphone, through your earphone in the car, or through your headphone or whatever yep. you're listening to on. And you're just going to get all the vibes from this <laughs> podcast right now. Pretend you're in Bali with us, guys. Yeah, we're taking every single one of you with us. Stop buying tickets. Yeah. Get over there. Message us. Changu's where it's at. Come, <laughs> find, come find us. We'll send you the address when you get there. You can, come, <laughs> you can stop, stay at our villa, like do all that oh, stuff. Oh, God. Um, yeah, so we're going... The next little phase is going to be a couple months of like relatables on tour in Indonesia. Um, so we're going to keep it classic. We're going to do all the stuff everyone loves. But I mean, anything else? We're a party of the people. So we wanted to say, is there anything that you guys think we'd be good at or like you want us to react to or any sort of like segments we haven't tackled before? Because yep. we like, we honestly do our best to read every single bit of input. What is it? Constructive criticism? Yeah, we, we like constructive criticism. We love all that stuff. And um, anything for season two you think we might tackle? We're happy to try new things. I'm, I'm, my saying in life is try everything once. Yep. Even if Except for a couple <laughs> of things. <laughs> <laughs> There's actually quite a few things that I think I'll try. <laughs> within reason. And I think this is in with it, within reason. Yep. But um, no, other than that, this is going to be a bit of a banger of an appy, Jake, banger I reckon. Banger of an appy. I think we're going to go, we're going to get into it quick. We're going to skip the intro. Yeah. Fuck all the casualties. Let's get into some of your guys' problems. Do what you want to do. Be what you want to be. Relatables. Dilemma time. Mm. I'm not wasting any time. No, you know, I'm not wasting any time today. Are <laughs> I think our energy is going to be like real. I, I think we're both just like antsy, just like <laughs> we're just so so excited, literally, literally. Because we literally we fly out today. Yeah, we're recording and flying out today. After this party, we're going to pack our bag with all this shit. Yeah, the vibes are just and then insane. leave. Leave. Yep. So dilemma: I have been with someone for almost two years. He is a great guy, perfect on paper, caring, funny, kind. Um, attentive. I love his family and friends, etc. But the more time passes, the more I want to distance myself from him for no apparent reason. I don't know if I should just keep trying and maybe I'll maybe I'll have real feelings again or I should just end it. Since we don't argue and there's nothing wrong with him, I think I might regret it later. Should I try more or leave this relationship? Okay, first off, as soon as she said he's a great guy, <laughs> perfect on paper, We've said that before. I was so upset. Yeah. He, I was instantly upset when that was said mm. instantly I, I, it's honestly maybe it's a simple answer that like do you reckon they say that because it makes himself feel better she's feeling guilty yeah. right now i yeah literally literally it's two two years is a long time though caring funny kind attentive i love his family and then yes it's, this is all like Ow. like if you were to break up with someone it's like it's not you i love you i love your family i love everyone i'm gonna miss it. it's like but seriously all you're doing is stab 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 all yeah. in the fucking heart yeah if you so yeah dude we came we came to choose violence, today. violence yeah. <laughs> well i was now that you say that i think you should break up with him personally same and do not don't you dare say so like 
Don't say you're a great guy to him. You don't say I think you're a great guy. I think you're caring, funny. You're everything that I could see myself settling down with. But like, just just make an excuse. Say he's like fucking annoying or something. I don't know. Give him a reason. That gives him closure. What do you think? Do you think breaking up with someone you need a reason? Like obviously, so you've been together for two years. Breakups are never, ever, ever easy. Mm. So he obviously is like doesn't want to break up. It seems like this guy's pretty vanilla. Yeah, and like she's bored. You're allowed to be bored. You don't need to feel guilty for being bored. Like, I know you do feel guilty. It's a natural human feeling. But, like, if he's vanilla and you're bored, fucking... You can't do anything like, about yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Honestly. Did they say how old they were? Nah. No. I would say young. Because You'd think young because she's thinking, like, right now, she's probably thinking, like, oh, I'm so young and this is just so boring. My friends are out partying and I'm stuck with this boring guy. Mm. Like, honestly, the way you described it just is saying he's boring. Yeah. Um, which is completely fine. I honestly just think... It's okay. Just break up with him, and um, you might regret it down the track. But I can do it. I don't know. I feel. I mean, like, yeah, it's okay to regret things, but like, I don't know. Fuck. Like, if you make a decision, if you're thinking about that, imagine if you were like, so say I'm the girl, yeah, and then you were the relationship. You think we we're all having the best time ever, and in the back of my head, every time I'm going to sleep, I'm thinking, fuck, maybe he's that boring. I want to get. A, I kind of want to break up with him. That, yeah. would, that would kill you. you. Yeah, true. That would kill you. So do it. Break up with him. Do him the right. Do him the right thing if he's all those nice things. Like yeah, you need to do the right thing for him and like break up with him. And then he needs like it's like because you're also wasting his time as well as your time. Literally, and like it's okay to not be the right one, even if he's all those nice things. Mm. It's like, it might just be the wrong person. I'm just I'm so mad that you said he's <laughs> perfect on paper. I love his family. I love it. and then look, I love his family and friends, etc. But <laughs> you can't say you could say. Anything at all. I could say, Oddy, I love you. Yeah. But yeah, it's like, if you leave, if you start with then a but. That many people do it too. I mean, started really I like, mean, I do it. It's a pet peeve of mine. It, but it's like, I mean, I do it as well, but it's like, I noticed that everyone just does it to make themselves feel yeah. better. You start off something like, um, you know, I, I think this is what I did. This is a funny thing I do. Yeah. Is I'll talk, I used to do this with my old boss. He's fucking hilarious. We used to just like talk at the absolute trash about people and just like we obviously don't like this person and then we go oh, he's a good bloke but yeah yeah and so like the, and then we would feel better about talking so much shit about this this person like a client yeah. like yada 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 and then it's like oh he's a good good bloke but literally just makes, you, makes yourself feel better <laughs> and then we just laugh and be like, but, no <laughs> we're in the clear <laughs> but um anyway break up with him do yeah. do right by him and um you'll figure it out after yeah i yeah. think that's good advice let's get relaxed yeah all right my turn weekly relatable. Can't believe you said that at the start. It's actually a dilemma, love. Okay. Either he's ghosting me or he's dead. I'm not kidding. I've been talking to, going on dates with this guy for three months. It's been so great and it's been so clear that we both like each other and are headed somewhere a bit more serious. One day, his energy flipped a 180. When I asked if he wants to hang out, he said, I don't know, man, I'm feeling sick this week. But here's the kicker. He left me on delivered, but his snap score has gone up one bit. No, sorry. His snap score has not gone up one bit. It's kind of crazy that you check it. When it usually goes up a significant amount every day. How often do you check it? He hasn't been been active on any other social media like he just disappeared. He's always been upfront with his feelings. So I feel like he'd tell me if he wanted to stop seeing me. But the fact that he's not on any social media makes me think something's happening, but we're not official. So I feel like it's not my place to ask, what do I do? <laughs> you stop being psycho first. Oh, please say, bro, got like a burner phone, and <laughs> moved to Mexico, got a new life. I'm a little this, I'm a little worried. This guy this might be dead. <laughs> I hope he is. I don't, I don't want anyone to have to go through this. Um, look, okay. Why are you checking up on him so much? Oh, dude. In her defense. No. In her defense. No. In her de- But. But. She seems like a lovely girl. But. Okay. In her defense. they she, It was three months of going on dates and hanging out. Okay. And it seemed like it was going to get more serious. Yeah. So it's like no one's delusional enough to be like a one-sided thing of thinking it's going to get more serious. So obviously he also made it seem like he liked it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then just full 180, one day he's like, I, don't, I can't fit, hang out today, I'm feeling sick this week. Mm. And then he disappears. And although it's a little psycho, she keeps checking, but his snap score hasn't gone up. He hasn't been active on social media because it says like last active. Yeah. Um, 
So he either has like ghosted to the point where he's made an entire new life or this guy is dead. So in her defense, she could probably just be like, look, it's all good. Mm. I just want to know if you're dead. I don't know how to help her though. No, I know. That's what I'm thinking. All all you can think of is asking like, look, you're all good. Like, don't worry about me. We're, We're done. But are you okay? Yeah. She's just worried about his well-being. But we all know where that leads to. The oh, are you okay? Then it just keeps going on, this, that, and the other. Mm. It's like the cheeky um Nex always reaches out on happy birthday and says, Happy birthday. Would like to reconnect? That's like right. the it's like the same thing. If you say, Are you okay? And then you're like, Oh, how are you been? Yeah, yeah. And then you keep the yeah, you, <laughs> you keep, just keep it going. going. Honestly, <clears throat> if I'm reading the situation correctly, I think I think he ghosted. He's ghosted <laughs> you because he's had a oh, I'm sorry, he's had a gauge of it's like a crazy, yeah, crazy killer vibes is going on there. We're, we're reading an anonymous Instagram's message, <laughs> yeah, and we don't even. There's no profile picture, and we can kind of tell that you are <laughs> very trusting. Yeah, not at all. And um, the fact that like all, those, all the Snapchat things, I don't know what you're doing behind closed doors. Who knows what else you're doing? Could have like a tracker on his car or something. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> so like. I think cut your losses now. Just um, yeah, yeah. Don't worry about it. Yeah, just cut your losses now. Three months. It's not a good long time. Um, yeah. Move on to the next. Yeah. <laughs> Even if if we're wrong and you're really nice, maybe. here we go. <laughs> I got a plan. Like you said, cut up, cut your losses. Move on to the next. Mm. Okay. So with the next, if it happens again, you know this one ghosted. Yeah. If it doesn't happen again. Then you'd think you could be like, okay, maybe he's dead. I'm not the psycho. Maybe he's yeah. dead. So maybe, that's a good test. Maybe I'm not the problem. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I suppose that's a good idea. But um, anything to not be the problem. Maybe you just maybe you need someone who's a bit psycho too. Like that's fine. Maybe yeah. you want someone like a dude who's unlike trusting and like needs to check up on you every like couple. You minutes. guys can both be codependent together. Yeah, it's, I, I don't know if that's healthy, but it might be. For you. <laughs> yeah, it's healthy for some people. Yeah. <laughs> um, but honestly, yeah, I don't know. This one's tricky. Yeah. Um, Sorry, I think what Oddie said, cut your losses down and move on. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, simple. <clears throat> next one, dilemma time. Okay, I'm considering moving to Australia next year. I have no friends. I feel like there's nothing here for me in the UK. However, <sighs> I live with my mum and my doc. I don't know why she mentioned that. My mum is in the same boat as me. She pretty much has no friends and we are outcast of the family. I feel like moving. I feel like moving would help. I feel like moving would help me start a new life, but how would how would you cope with the guilt of leaving your mother and her own on her own on her own? I can't read, eh? No. On her own, she, she she would also have to move and downside to afford rent. If I moved out, so if I were to come home, if I fuck me, I might just go again. You want me to read it for you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna go again, eh? Do you want to go zoom in on it? Can we start? I'm going again. Dilemma. Okay, so I've. I've just. <laughs> I don't know why I'm struggling. Well, honestly, this sort of written my wife. This is pretty relatable. You could leave this in, and they might think it's funny. They might think it's pretty funny. You could leave. I I wouldn't be mad if you left this in. <laughs> Deep breath. Dilemma. This is gonna be so hard now. Gonna, okay, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Okay, d- dilemma. Okay, so I'm considering moving to Australia next year. I have no friends, and I feel like there's nothing here for me in the UK. However, I live with my mum and my dog. My mum is in the same boat as me. She pretty much has no friends and we are outcasts of the family. I feel like moving would help me start a new life, but how would you cope with the guilt of leaving, leaving your mother on her own? She would also have to move and downsize to afford rent if I moved out. So if I were to come back home, all I would have is a couch to sleep on. Thank you guys. Love the potty. Thank you for listening. Yes, thank you very much. So this that one's is, a little bit different. I that's think. a bit sad. I want, yeah, it is a little bit sad. Um, I actually really want to... Help her. Um, so the one thing, okay, I'm going to go bad side first and good side. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of a relatable thing is people think there's nothing here for me where I am now. And if I mo- move somewhere else. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we deal with that last week as yeah, well. Yeah. Heaps of people think, and then I'll start a new life. Yeah. But literally that's not the problem. Everyone thinks that the grass is greener. Yeah. On, on the, the other side. side, we know that many people are like, Oh, I'm going to go to Queensland and start a new life. Yeah. And they like, fuck this one up. And they think they can start a new I'm one. I'm looking at my parents right now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. We'll keep going. Um, yeah, no, I know what you mean. But um, um, if you have no friends there, like what makes you think you're going to have friends here? Like, are you going to be put on a new persona? Mm-hmm. Why don't you put on that new persona there? It's going to attract the same reason and then yeah. figure it out. If, if you, I think honestly, um, the bond you have with your mum is probably more important than anything else in the world. Yeah, yeah, I agree. S- especially if she's the outcast and leaving her. So like, yeah, 
I, I would think maybe do a, go for a little holiday here and there. Go That's what I was going to say. Yeah, maybe you should. I think um, I do think it would be pretty like obviously you're going to feel guilty about leaving your mom on her own and stuff. Um, but also it would be pretty bad of her. Like I don't, she didn't say that her mom's making her feel bad. I, maybe she hasn't told her yet. Mm. But like you shouldn't feel bad about wanting to do something with your life. Also, oh, good point. I you didn't know? think of that. Yeah, like um, you know, we, there's there's a million different ways to go about it. This like um, dilemma. So let's say yeah, like she you shouldn't feel bad about wanting to go to Australia, and it's because it's something very exciting for people and. I'm sure she'd be so happy for you to to go do something, um, but like Oddie said, it doesn't like not. It's not the grass isn't always going to be greener. If you, and if you don't, you, yeah. If your message was me saying, "Hey, look, I've got this new job in like Australia that I've been offered, mm. and I have this really good bond with my mom, but I'm not sure if I want to leave." But it's you're saying I don't have any friends here. That's why I should leave. Is why I'm saying you should deal with that that head on first. Maybe it does. Yeah, it feels like you're trying to solve a problem that's very fixable. Yes. By just leaving. Yeah, which isn't the answer. Probably isn't the healthiest thing to do, but also, yeah. So She just wants to know what she should do. Yeah. Oh, okay. Let's go healthy answer. I, okay. honestly, I honestly reckon just try first before you do that to try and fix your life there. Okay. Yep. And make some friends. Because there's that many people in the UK. I'm mm-hmm. sure you can, you've probably stuffed up a friend group here or there mm. and go find another one, deal with that. And if you can do that and you still feel like you want to move to Australia, mm-hmm. Then go. Yeah, it's a good idea. If yep. you can make some friends here and then like, you're like, oh, well, this is actually a bit, if you make friends, I dare say you're like, oh, actually, it's not that bad here. Yeah. If you So either way, you're going to win-win. That's a good point. Yeah. And um, maybe, I don't know, maybe you could like G your mum up to both of you start saving some money and come for a holiday to Australia. Yeah. Because what if she loves it as well? Exactly. And you guys are both the outcast of your family. What if you both came to Australia? Literally. You can bring your dog. You, there's, I'm pretty sure dogs can go on some parts of planes. They I'm have sure like, if you travel once. Yeah, if you um, the people move countries all the time. Literally. And um, imagine moving to, to here with your mum. That'd be pretty It'd cool. Be pretty sick. The sun's shining. Vitamin D gives you good mood. Mm. And there's going to be a point in your life your mum's going to be have to live by herself anyway. Ex- yeah. What? Yeah. Exactly. So like, don't feel guilty. No, no. Don't. Yeah. Don't feel guilty. But at all, deal so. with those first issues first, and then yeah. think about moving. Hit me. Issues head on. You'll feel way better about it. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Sweet. All right, my next one actually is mm, kind of similar to this one. Okay. It's about friends again. Friends. I like the ones that aren't always like relationshipy. Yeah, this one's not the, this one this one's a short one and I so she messaged me and she said, um, on your podcast, can you talk about some tips on how to make new friends when you're not in school anymore? A bit silly, but I've just moved to a new state and I don't know anyone. Okay. So I said, oh, I was, I was like, I might bring this to Oddie as a dilemma mm. and see if we can think of anything to just maybe give some advice to people on on how to make new friends. Because you and I, I would say we wouldn't struggle talking to new people, but you and I do um, shy away from actually like making a new friend that we would call a close friend. Mm. Me and Oddie are always like, no, we've got our group. <laughs> yeah, we keep to ourselves. We're, we're pretty like fucking, mm. yeah, to ourselves. Mm, tighten it well here's something that i um did that i u- usually would say no to yeah when jake and i go to bali and um oh I, yeah i met this guy at the gym super nice guy like he really outgoing he came up to me and i think he recognized me from the pot or something mm. or, and we just started a conversation talked about gym and he said he was traveling i said i was traveling and we ended up being in bali at the same time mm-hmm. and we sort of just like we were in the same place or whatever and i think i might have offered, said like oh yeah we've got a villa or whatever i think yeah. we might have offered maybe like say we should catch up or something yeah 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 and um he messaged me the other day. He's like, hey, bro, I'm here. Like, do, um, do you mind? You got a place to stay? Happy to pay rent? Yeah. And I was like, usually I would probably be like, yeah, nah. <laughs> Oddie would usually ignore that. <laughs> that. The answer would be a ghost. But I'm, <laughs> but I'm at a different phase in my life and the guy seemed really nice and cool and genuine. I was like, mm. fuck it. I'm just going to say, I asked the boys for permission. I was like, yeah, come on, man. Like, we'll go hang out with this guy and make a new friend. Yeah. But that's a very... Um, Niche situation. That's a niche situation because he reached out. Yeah, but my answer to that would probably just the easiest thing is like we said it before. We've said it before, like sporting teams, mm-hmm. um, like group classes. Probably mm-hmm. for if she was a girl, was mm-hmm. it? Group classes, Pilates. Oh yeah, any sporting. Type, t- yeah, that's good. Any idea. type of like I don't know yoga, yeah. anything like that. You can get in like boxing or running girls, running clubs. Like Boy, when, running clubs. You're saying all these really good and healthy ones. Yeah. Dude, my mind didn't even go there. Really? So my mind, I was thinking, I know a girl that we went to school with. She just went and she, so she has friends around here, but um, she went, she wanted to move out of home 
And um, she went on Flatmates, which is just like a thing. And she went on and it's like Tinder almost. Really? She said, it's like you make an account, you say what you like, you say your personality, and then you can meet people or like apply to go to a house that you like of that people have this a profile where you think you get along with them. Mm. And so she went and she moved into this house and um, with the girl she'd never met and they are best friends now. Okay. Full best friend. And, and I was like, okay, that's a good, a fair enough way to make friends. Like I think people would go on there. You got to be careful on there. Like Probably. people might lie on their profile and stuff. It's like Tinder. But like. You walk in and she's 5'2 <laughs> instead of 5'4. <five>, <laughs> <laughs> or you walk in, you walk in, and he's five two instead of six foot. Yeah. <laughs> but um, so I'm gonna say, so all of the things Oddie said are great ideas. If yeah. you want to get, like, you're thinking about even, you want to get into some health and fitness, run clubs, all that type of stuff. And one people they shy away because it's like, oh, I'm not very good at running this. Yeah. it's literally not about that. All no. the people are there for the same reason. They're all there for the social aspect. Social, like the running one's really good because you go for a little jog. Mm-hmm. You might, and then and you, you'll get coffee. You get you run with whoever's at the same time passive. You might talk to them too, and yeah. then the coffee after is what everyone's there for. Exactly. Literally, you're communicating. You'll have a little talk about whatever there's probably on. walking clubs yeah go to a walking club 100%. cycling class yeah whatever whatever you i'm sure yeah. you have an interest or hobby yeah that's exactly. the main one and then yeah you, yeah whatever hobby you're into go I guarantee like there's people. a club for it yeah 100 go look go on facebook put yourself your area there. put yourself out there yeah social media is good for that type of stuff guys bad for a lot of things but great for that and especially if you're a girl i feel like just like if you would have saw some people having coffee or something online, mm. and you just went up to them and said, "Hey, like I'm new to the area, do you mind if I come sit down and have a chat, mm. talk about like give me some recommendations?" and then you just start chatting. I feel like girls are for the girls, yeah. And guys, if a if, if a guy did that to me, I wouldn't do it. Exa- <laughs> see, this is what this is why it's different for guys. So, so girls, I feel like they're just so for the girls, yeah. And then we could be wrong. Correct us if we're wrong. Messages say, so "Fuck you, Jake, you're wrong." But with guys, I'm just thinking of our group, for instance. If we were all sitting there, maybe having lunch and a guy came up, he's like, I'm new to the area, yada, yada, yada. Like we would be nice yeah. and we'd be like, we could recommend places, but we wouldn't bring him into our group ever. <laughs> no. <Nah, laughs> never. Nah. We're kind of toxic though. Are you, we are kind of toxic. But dudes are. That's what even yeah. when- But I think all dudes are like that. I'm not saying just us. All yeah. dudes are like that. I think it's hard. hard dudes, I don't know. Dudes, all dudes' friends are from like- sports or school mm. whereas like girls like peter out and there's like two or three have gone here in a different direction this way or the other whereas i had the same friends from like year seven and yeah. then more of a couple more of yeah but they're all from like school you'll know them from school yeah literally uh. literally so dudes are a little bit different so if you're a girl and answering this question you're probably a bit luckier if you're in all honesty yeah probably yeah. so good luck guys yeah hopefully that's a little bit of good advice yeah and, and um, i mean same goes for the um the dilemma before this one while you're in still in the uk Try those groups. Yeah, literally. Yeah. What are you interested? Try those groups. Get your mum to go with you. Go dog walking club. Go dog. dog. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> There's a lot of options. You got to try, exhaust everything, and then yeah, cool. Yeah. Do what you wanna do. Be what you wanna be. Relatables. Okay, guys. Last week we um gave you a little insight into the secrets of the male brain. We did. You're welcome, by you the way. You guys are welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. Literally. But um, it's coming back to us. So yeah. Is yin, yin and yang the right thing? I don't know. Um, I don't know. I mean, I call it a bit of give and take. <laughs> yeah, give and take. Whatever. Yin and yang, is, I think that, that means balance, but this is still balance. That's balancing yeah, each other out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So this is things girls love but won't admit. <laughs> and oh my God. So I put, a <laughs> I put an Instagram story up. Yeah. And I got fucking bombarded. I, you said you showed me, bro. <laughs> oh, I, crazy! I went down to the beach yesterday and just sat in the sun and like copied and pasted all the good ones. Mm. It took me like forty five minutes. Oh my god! <laughs> so it's, we, a bit, it's work, oh, you know. It's work. <laughs> it's, it's work. Yeah. But so me and Jake are going <laughs> to rattle off some things girls love but won't admit, and some of them, man. Whew, I was not. I, <laughs> caught me off guard. Really? I know. I use. I've read a couple. of them. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Um, things girls love but won't admit. Tickle attacks. Tickle attacks. I say I hate them, but I secretly love them. <laughs> Honestly, I mean, I say I hate them and I do hate them. <laughs> I hate them. But I like to, I mean, okay, that's cool. It's good to know. Don't tickle me. No hey. way. So I, we, we can be the tickle monster. We can be- <laughs> <laughs> I just never initiate it because if I'm getting tickled back, I'm swinging. Yeah. I'll be sw- <laughs> I'm swinging. Literally. Could never. <laughs> um, things girls love, but don't admit when they're a bit toxic. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know how many of them I got? 
bro. Oh. Every girl is like, oh, he's so toxic, but I really like him. What do I do? You love the toxicity. We know you love it. Girls love drama. If there's they some love drama. Anything that's like, oh, dude, he's, like, he's such a dog. Like, oh, he's fucking hot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Things girls love but won't admit. Thumb in the bum. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's all good by me. Have you ever done it? I actually haven't. Had it. I actually haven't. <laughs> uh, yeah, honestly, it's kind of. <laughs> she didn't tell me to stop. <laughs> oh, your parents watch this. Fuck. <laughs> Sorry, Michael. Sorry, Brenda. <laughs> <laughs> Things girls love but don't admit: the bare minimum. <laughs> 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 the bar is so oh low too. God, the oh. We have discovered from this podcast that the bar is so fucking, <laughs> fucking low. low. Literally. <laughs> I feel bad. Oh, that is, as you would say in the UK, sweet. <laughs> Holy shit. Things girls love but won't admit. When he calls you at 2 a.m. to pick you up, I actually love being a personal Uber driver. Oh. That's a really nice one. Okay. Change I usually, I always get called. I fucking hate it. Oh, <laughs> so annoying. I can't stand it. Things girls love but don't admit, arguing. Mm. Mm. That's why, wait, one of the dilemmas. They, she goes, we never argue. Yeah. She, clearly she wants a bit of arguing. I think that might be my problem a bit too, eh? Hey? What? I never argue with like, I never argue with- <laughs> <laughs> Kick up. I never argue with like any of my- like relationships or situationships ever, I don't think. Okay. Really? Have you, do you? I don't think you do either. um, I've only ever had proper arguments when alcohol is involved. Yeah. And that's like one of the reasons why I wanted to stop drinking was um, because the only time I ever had had arguments with was with alcohol. Um, But- Do you reckon that's a bad thing if you don't argue? Yeah. I think, I think arguing is healthy. Okay. And I think that- What's a normal thing to argue about? I just think little things, you know? Like okay. put the fucking toilet seat down and you just like, leave me alone. And then you need to have a little argument and then you guys need to just like be like, okay, look. And then there needs to be compromise. And then- it's, Maybe my it's, way of coping is like a joke. A, if someone said like, put the toilet seat down. Mm. I'd be like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no. <Nah. Nah. laughs> yeah, exactly. Like um, like me and my sister argue, we're not a relationship, yeah. but like we argue all the fucking time. Yeah. And I think that the reason that like, and like, I know you, do you and your brother argue at all? Oh, a little bit. A little bit. But when you were younger, you did. Yeah, when we were younger, way more. Yeah. Yeah. But I also, I'm just trying to think. I think arguing is healthy for a relationship. Okay. I do. Maybe it's just little shit and I don't even think it's arguing though. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Like, why, why didn't you put this in the fridge or something like that? Stuff like that. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's yeah. Just, I'm not talking like, <laughs> are you cheating on me? <laughs> <laughs> why don't you like my mum? <laughs> <laughs> Sp- speaking of, <laughs> things girls love but won't admit. When he doesn't cheat on me. Hey, <laughs> what do you mean? They won't admit that they love that? <laughs> oh. oh, far out. Things girls love but don't admit when they text our friends to check on us when we are out, like take care of my girl. Mm. Do you reckon? Oh, so wait, they like, they're saying like, I'm say you're my girlfriend. Yeah. Oh my God, hey, Jake, I'm so, dr- <laughs> I'm so drunk. And then- I'm so drunk. And then I message like a friend, your friend to be like, oh, please just take care of, take care of my girl tonight. Yeah. And then she tells you that. Mm, that That's what of, they love. That is kind it's of- It's like, sweet. oh, he cares. He cares. He cares. Okay, okay. A lot of girls, but then some guys be like, why are you texting my friend? Yeah. And then you have an argument. <laughs> oh, there you go. So it's win, <laughs> it's win, lose, win. Win, lose, win. Yeah, okay. Stay like healthy. <clears throat> I like this thing. Things girls love but won't admit. When they say, I built that. I worked on that. Love seeing them all proud. They love that? Apparently, I read oh, that. Oh, damn. I know, hey. I'm so happy. That's such a dad thing to do. He's like, I worked on that house. <laughs> <laughs> I did that garden. Because <laughs> around here, I get to say it to a few houses. Yeah. And then also, any video of us is like, hey, South Studio. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I built that. <laughs> oh. Things girls love, but don't admit. Remembering what we order at each restaurant we go to. I thought that was smooth. That's that a is good one. Good. I was thinking maybe I should start doing that. Yeah, you got to start keeping mental tabs. Literally, that was keeping that. mental tabs, and then it's like, oh my god, you remembered that? Yeah, and you, I can, and you don't just order it from you. Go like the usual. 
And then you order them. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. What are you making me wet? <laughs> <laughs> Don't say that, man. Don't say that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Things girls love but won't admit. When he leaves your room tidy and makes your bed. Surely that's they would admit they love that. They're not just going to be like not say thank you. Yeah, I know that that is that one. Is, some of them will like that, but I was like, maybe they're just. I think communication streams in a lot of things, <laughs> relationships, There's a lack of, and situationships are just like not there. Wait, situationships. There is zero communication apart from moaning. Yeah. <laughs> Good point. Good point. That's probably that. You make, she makes it, but you make the bed and she's just like, oh. <laughs> uh, things girls love but don't admit. Drama. Drama. We know that one. Oh, yeah. We don't need you to admit it. They, we, they fucking read that every day of the week. <laughs> things girls love but won't admit when they bully me. Ooh. Yeah. I have been, all I do is bully. Literally. I mean, I, I'm uh, happy with that. Do you know how there's the five lang- love languages? Yeah. They should put bullying on there. Oh, easy. Yeah, that's my love that's language. That's my, my love language is bullying. Yeah, 100%. It's just like taking the absolute piss. I call it like flirtatious banter. Yeah, flirtatious. Mm. Mm. A little book or something about like that. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do you, did you say you might write a book? Yeah. You I'll could put- write a book about it. <laughs> Holy shit. This man could write a book. You should. <laughs> Tips for men, flirtatious banter <laughs> by Audie Clark. Yeah, maybe I should. Are you kidding? I should You have. should actually do that. And then every page should just be a scenario of messaging. So you can go to certain <laughs> scenarios in the book and then be like, how do I reply to this message? And it's just, boy, I turn the one love. whole chapter is pickup lines. The love guru, literally. Fuck, that is hilarious. You can make some money on no, me. Mate. 10% here. I'd <laughs> <buy it. laughs> um, things girls love. But don't admit when you're in the shower and he just comes in to piss and then says to and then stays to chat. Mm. Oh, when you're in the shower, he comes in and then stays to have a little chat while you're in the shower. Yeah. When, That's kind of sexy. It's kind of sexy. When I was reading this man, I don't know why. I started just funny picture of me it was just like the dude comes in to piss, but he sits down and, <laughs> just starts, and then he just starts chatting. And I just started losing it at the beach, eh? Because oh, I was just like, because he's not going to just stand there and talk. He's going to no, want to sit. He's, he's obviously going to want to sit down. He's going to want to sit down. And when he does it, he's going to grunt when he sits down as well. <laughs> I was like, that's a nick. Oh. 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 <laughs> May as well sit down to piss. Yeah. That's Imagine seeing a guy sit down to piss. That's, that's what I meant. Um, things girls love but won't admit when they make you feel small in like a play fight or cut away. Oh, but that's why if I, I've, it's the same thing when they make me feel big, which is like the same thing. Yeah. And they like wrap around you and you just got so much extra body parts. I know. And you're just like, fuck, this is so sexy. It's so hot. funny that um, at work, um, I just have, cause you like spend so much time with the people at work to have banter with them. Yeah. And um, I don't know why I do this, but whenever I'm walking past someone, I'll just go, <laughs> <laughs> I think I get it from you. <laughs> yeah. <I> just- <laughs> For the listeners, Jake just pay, fake punched me. <laughs> and so then I make people flinch and then I go, Hart, you flinched. I don't know why I love doing it. You did get it from me. And, um, and then someone at this girl at work goes, um, she's like, oh, actually, let's fight. And I was like, I could fucking throw you across the room. <laughs> yeah. You're that small. I yeah. could throw you. And it just, I was, I don't know why. It just is like, flirtatious yeah, a bit of flirtatious banter. Bleeding banter. You. Things girls love but don't admit, the chase. Yeah. Everyone crazy. loves the chase. Yeah, literally. Oh man. I'm thinking, I'm thinking though, um, hot take. The older we get, that's gonna change. I reckon just like we're saying it, transparency is hot. Transparency. I reckon after just like a first date, and then like normally you want to like leave a bit in the air. Mm. You just say like if you both I really like you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I, I really I, like it. Oy. Yeah, you get like a little thing in your stomach, you're like, oh my god, like I do. Like I like you too. And it's better than like both not knowing. Then you both know and there's secureness in the thing and then the communication from the start. Secureness from the very beginning. It's literally the best thing. Transparency. Is hot. The fuck, Oddie. Literally. Do you reckon a girl would be get the ick? I hate that word. Get turned off. Mm. Or um be like appreciative. Sorry, if you like say you pick her up and then um for a date, first date, and then she's like, you get in, you're like, oh, hey, how are you? And then she's like, hey, how are you? And then if you were to just be like, honestly, I'm pretty nervous. What do you reckon? Do they love that or do they not like it? Uh, like, honestly, I'm actually kind of nervous. 
And then it depends they'd be like, the maybe they'd be like, oh, fuck, you're adorable. It, <laughs> it depends on the girl. But um, okay, you fucking get it out of me, Jake. So you know how you mentioned my soft launch the other day? Yeah. I knew I was going to get there. <laughs> <laughs> you're a fuck with. Um, I'm basically explaining what I did. I said on the first day that I'd be really nervous too. And she liked it. Why do you think I just said that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and before, like, um, just the whole way along, like, trans person, as soon as I knew that, like, I liked it, I was saying that I like it. You and, said it. And, and literally, it's probably, like, the most healthy thing I've ever been in ever. And, like, the communication, transparency is Guys. just, like, really, really good. Guys, I'm losing him. <laughs> I'm losing him. Uh, that's where, but all my advice that I, I sort of give is, like, first time this is coming into, into tuition. Yeah. And it's, it. like, really good. Mm. Just communication. When I was reading those things, I was like, you're just dumb. Just talk. Yeah. Yeah, literally. It's the simplest thing. It's just saying how you feel and communicating your um, feelings. I love it. Yeah. Is it your turn or my turn? Um, I think it's mine. When a super independent girl feels the need not to be as independent and feels safe. Like with a guy? Yeah. Ooh. So we say independence is hot. And then like oh, damn. she lets her guard down when she's with him. Like because and she she loves having that feeling, and then like she lets him in and does like he does things for her, and then like she doesn't do that because she's normally so independent in her normal life. That's like she's like, a, oh my god, I'm yeah, yeah, right. that one's nice. That's a, that's a good one. That's a really good one. That's a heaps good one. Things girls love but don't admit: mansplaining. Man, <laughs> they love it. Oh, mansplaining you all. The I will mansplain anything. Literally. <laughs> <laughs> Are you kidding? I'll, I, even if you don't love it, I'll do it unintentionally. Literally, literally. It's the funnest thing. Oh, I love doing it. <laughs> Things girls love but won't admit when they say, quote, I saw this and thought of you or, quote, get dressed. We're going for a drive. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Mm. That is. The first, I'm loving this. The I mean, first, I'm getting so much information. Yeah, I know. It's a bit of an overload. I'm going to save these notes. Anybody wants them, fucking message yeah. me. I'll, I'll fucking send them I'll, to you. Any guys. Yeah, I'll email them to you. Literally. Things girls love but don't admit. When boys get stinky and sweaty after a workout or doing something handy. That's so, yes. I'm glad. Girls, I'm glad as well. Girls love that like guy smell, that musk. I'm a sweaty mess too. You're a sweaty mess. Yeah. yeah. So like I'm glad that like sometimes I'm self-conscious. Like I need to get some deodorant on real quick. Yeah. But like the musk is what- I only sweat in the summer. Yeah, okay. Like no matter how hard, I, I only, in the winter I can, if I'm working out, I don't sweat. But in this, if I run, I do stuff like that. Yeah. But um, in the summer, all I gotta do is walk into the gym and I'm driven. Yeah, it's like, what's it, pheromones? Fer what's the word? I don't know. I think what it's like the natural- Yeah. Yeah, whatever that is. Things girls love but won't admit. When he feels comfortable enough to fight around you. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> when do you reckon that is? I, I mean, if you're Jack, the first date. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I just think there's like some uh, just sexy about just like not doing it for a long time. Yeah. How were your stomach cramps after your first date? <laughs> seriously. Oh, seriously. Did you have some? Oh, or sort of, were you just like ready? Like when you got in the car to go home, were you just like ripping? Sort of. Um, I was actually like surprisingly good. Okay. I was like kind of surprised myself. Yeah. yeah no, it was like a moment. I had to go to the car at one point. And I was like, <laughs> I, took my, I took my chance. <laughs> oh, uh, but like, so no, I was pretty good. I didn't really oh, think about shit. it that much. Uh, things girls love, but don't admit when we are mad, but you make us laugh. Mm. Oh my God. I feel like that's just a guy specialty. Oh, that's what I was thinking. I was thinking that's my specialty. I know all you and all guys also hate it when you, we hate it when you're mad at us. Yeah. We hate it when you are mad at us. And it's such a rewarding feeling when they're either angry or crying and you say something like cheeky or funny and then they get this. And then they grin. They grin and then they go back to like this. <laughs> so it's like, okay, they're mad at you and you make them laugh and you're just like, I'm back in. Yeah. We're back in boys. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's, best, it's like our super that's our, it super, is. It's it's our superpower in a relationship our superpower is pissing you off and then making it better yeah, literally things girls love but won't admit I got a lot of these and I was quite surprised being overly protective at a party for instance showing that I belong to him and no one else okay which I was, constant like yeah you know, hand, hand on back do you reckon that's all of them or just like I don't know I just can't be bothered to do it I don't mind the F, I just don't want to do it no I'm more just like you go have fun, we have to go have fun, then we go have fun together. Then you go do your own thing, I do my own thing, then we come mm. together. Like, I think like, so they would like that. I think yeah. that what they're saying is they like that, but they also, they don't, like they love it, but they don't want to admit they love it, is that you're a little overprotective. Yeah, so they want the world to Because they don't know. want to admit that yeah. they want some toxicity in their life. Yeah, mm. okay. So they, they want a little bit of like, she's mine, bitch, don't she's, fucking touch Yeah, her. that's it. Yeah, right, okay, I'm with you, I feel it. Things girls love but don't admit when you just choose a place to go on a date and don't ask us. 
Ooh. So we just go, we're going here. Like, yeah. get dressed, we're going here. Literally, it's smooth, it's so much smoother. And then, because most of the time they don't even know what they want. No, I know. Yeah, girls, you never know what you want. Nah. Why? Yeah. And oh, actually, honestly, fuck it. I'll choose. Yeah, literally. We're, yeah. Going, we're going goods. Yeah. <laughs> you and you fucking goods, bro. I had it like three times this week. Okay? <laughs> Maybe even four. Fucking hell. <laughs> well, this is my last, last thing. Things girls love but won't admit. When he wears something borderline that he usually wouldn't uh-huh. and he asks for like my approval and thoughts. Ooh, mm. I always, I love getting the approval. Yeah, so he's like thinking he's going to wear something a bit risque. Like, yeah. You know, let's put some crocs. Like, hey, babe, what do you think of this? Yeah, is, it, is it me? Is it me? Yeah. She goes, that's you. <laughs> Literally. And yeah, the, the, the backing she gives me gives me that f- self of confidence. I know. And I'm just like, I'm going to attack the world right now. A guy could say, dude, that looks good. Wouldn't give a fuck. No, not at all. A girl goes, oh, wait, that outfit looks good. I'd be so confident for a month. Yeah. My confidence for a month would just be. Whew. I love what like they, I love, do you reckon when, we, do you, I'd say our style is like relatively decent. Yeah. Do you reckon next girlfriends we get well style will still be elevated? Because we like to say that the girlfriend elevates your style. I think it'll change a little bit here and there. You reckon? I don't know. Unless we've gotten to a point where we're just like at our peak and they don't have any opinions. <laughs> and they're just like, no, you have good style. Don't even stress. Yeah. Okay. okay. Maybe. Because we, we see our friends who have absolutely no style get like a little bit of elevation. Here, mm. <laughs> From their girlfriends helping them out. Yeah. Things girls love but don't admit when boys night gets cancelled. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's like the perfect answer to the question. That's the peak of what girls love. I've got a couple more. Things girls love but don't admit. Baby talk. Ooh. Ooh, can you do it? Um, what do you want me to say? <laughs> give me a sentence. <laughs> um, fuck, what are you saying, baby talk? Like, I just give. I, I could say I, you could probably turn anything into baby talk. So give me a sentence. Say like, "Hey, cupcake, I want to have dinner." Oh fuck, okay. You, you know who's heaps good at this is the inspired unemployed. Yeah. Um, okay. hey, cupcake, I want to have some dinner. Do you want to go get dinner with me? Do you want to go get some dinner? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I gotta get. I gotta do the grunt to get in the mood. Okay. <laughs> Hey, cupcake, we're going to get some dinner. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. <laughs> no, no, that was heaps good. Oh, my God. <laughs> I swear I've never done that before. <laughs> <laughs> you got me. <mate. laughs> oh, oh, shit. shit. Oh, God. <laughs> Things girls love but don't admit. Us shadow boxing them. Yes! Yes. (laughs) I'm the fucking king of that stuff too. I'm a a shadow boxing world champion, if anyone didn't know. (laughs) Things girls love but don't admit, they're ex. (laughs) (laughs) It's so true. Oh, things girls love but don't admit, sucking dick. (laughs) (laughs) Just fucking admit it. We'll be fine with it. (laughs) Okay, I'll give you. They were all girls except for... (laughs) That last one. Sucking dick. <laughs> it was that was a guy. Yeah. <laughs> so guys, I know exactly who it was as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, it's hot in here. I get it. I'm dying. I'm losing it, eh? Wait, it's, it's getting so hot. It's hot in here. Holy shit. Move All on. Right, let's move, move on. on. Move on. Do what you wanna do. Be what you wanna be. Relatables. All right, Jake. It's been a long time since you and I have just spoken to each other without any prompts or any like, what's it, like any prep work. Yeah, prep work. And I thought this topic could be a good thing just to let our hearts and um, thinking process just see where see where it takes us. Yeah, literally. literally. That's what a podcast is about, guys. We're just gonna make it raw. Yeah. See where it takes us. We don't, yeah. This topic is talking about family which is a thing that we talk about quite a lot yeah and um we have two very different families we do have two very different families completely different and that's (laughs) quite interesting though because i'm starting to realize recently the impact that your upbringing and your family has on you like subconsciously yeah and the person that you are and you can't change that because of that's the environment that you were brought up in yeah and some people unfortunately aren't blessed in the old gene pool department and you f- I'm finding out a lot recently that like some people's families are like the reason why they're this way and the reason why they have trauma, the reason why they're this, that and the other. Yep. And it's a bit of a um, hard thing to like process and you might get down down about it and be like, fuck, why was I not blessed with this? Why am I family like this? Why don't I have heaps of money? Why don't I have this? Why don't I have yeah. that? This, that and the other. But 
one thing that I had a realization when we moved out, and I think it's something that the more we're getting older, the more we should value. And especially with talking about all these friends sleeping with this, that, and the other, that I think we should probably talk about is you can create your own family with your friends. Yeah. And um, I was I had a realization once when we so Jake and I used to live together with our friend downstairs. Me and Jake lived upstairs. Jackie and boy downstairs. Jackie boy, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I did think we, we were, I think we had like homemade pizzas once. And um, Jack's girlfriend lived downstairs. Or not lived there. She was she there. Was there a lot. She was there a lot. Yeah. And she came up. And I was just thinking, we we're all just chatting, and it was like a family. Yeah. It was literally like we created our own little family from yeah. f- from friends. Yeah. And then you guys got Pluto. Yeah, we got a dog. Pluto was a little kid. We got a kid together, which is a little dog together. Yeah. yeah I didn't get custody. <laughs> <laughs> you lost custody on that one. <laughs> I lost custody on that one. But um, I was thinking that like a lot of people aren't blessed and they get down with that. But there, there's no time like the present to make your own family. Yeah like with your friends and do something like I was at it. It was one of the like happiest things I've ever done is just talking here because the conversations with the family you make is so much better. Than yeah. the conversa- you go to like a family dinner and shit and you talk about all this boring stuff about like, no one wants to talk about that. Especially when you make, um, when you do live with friends, it was fucking fun. Eh? Yeah, Actually, I do miss it. It was so much fun. Um, but the, so the conversations you have with them compared to your parents is like, we'll talk about way different shit because We'll talk about like the dirty, intricate, yeah. the the funny, the you know the memories, the and like where nothing's off the table. Literally, with your parents, you're just you know you're more respectful. They don't want to hear certain things. They don't want to you know grandparents. They don't want to hear certain things. So the reason that it feels so so good, yeah. I guess the only thing I work, I think it was just good, is because you can just nothing's off the table. Literally. It's the best. It's awesome. You know, it's literally like, that was one of the first times that I've like, I always knew I wanted kids, but I was thinking like, that's the first time I want to start my own family. Cause that's sort of like an indication of what you can make yourself yeah. in a way. And yeah. like and healthy, it's just fun. This, that, and the other you can be, it's all about you. Whereas yeah. like the f- um, family you're in and now you don't get to choose how that you're just popped in there. Yeah. And you're just in another added thing in the equation. And it's so funny when you're like hanging out with people and they do things a certain way or like they think a different way. And well, my thing recently has been like when you realize not everyone's nice. Yeah. And okay. the big thing about me is trying to figure out like why are they like that? Like why are some people like fuckwits or why do they do things a certain way? And yeah. I'm yeah, like, yeah. And then I'm, I just come back to them like that's all they know. Everyone. Yeah. Everyone's a product of their environment and especially their early environment because yeah. the early years of your life are like the most development. By Literally. Far, you just, from, you, you, you're like a sponge. You from can zero s- to four or something. It's like the most, like if you don't learn some of the basic things of life, then you really will never learn them. You and can you s- can really tell with people. I know. I know. Yeah. It's so funny and you consume everything. And like, would you, you probably, you say you're pretty, I was, I'm realizing like how similar I am to my dad. Yep. And you, you reckon you're oh like, my God. Yeah. It's like, a, I didn't even think like a year ago, I don't think I even thought I was, but I'm just like, fuck, I'm just so similar to my dad. Yeah. I take that on. I love it when people say, whoa, you are just like your dad. I take that as the biggest compliment because he is hands down the absolute highest figure yeah. in my life. Like, I don't, yeah, like I think I don't look up to anyone more. It's like, you know, I have like uncles, like parent, like my stepmom, you know, grandparents, like they're like, they're like I look up to them mm. and I like respect them. But my dad, I, I don't think I've ever even explained this. My dad is like seriously on an entirely different planet to them. Yeah. It's wild, eh? Yeah. It's anything, weird. I don't know, we've said like anything he says to me, I'm just like his little minion and I'll believe it. Literally. It's like dad said this. Yeah. And I'm, we're very lucky to be in a position where like, we're from f- two fairly well-off families. We're so, oh yeah, we are so lucky. Yeah, and, and we we know that. And it's like a healthy families and this that and the other. But I was thinking like supportive. What's the best approach for someone who like isn't from like a lot of people have to move out of home at eighteen. Mm. Like we got, sort of got ahead a little bit. We waited though. We didn't have to pay like that much rent or whatever. Mm. Got a step ahead. Whereas some people physically have to move out at like eighteen or whatever, or for certain reasons in their family because it's a toxic place for the bee. Yeah, yeah, that's and they so got they to start, family life's different. Like, and the sort of dilemmas are similar, and they got to start their own life. And I was thinking, like, what's the best way to make your own f- like family essentially, and like start make that find someone or like find an outlet like we have as our fathers. Yeah, and like I just I, I didn't really have an answer, and I was no, thinking like, okay, because a lot of people aren't like I reckon majority of people aren't blessed. I th- yeah, I agree. I would, they, I would agree. They get chucked in the life's 
um, deep end. And life's just like the most confusing thing that no one makes any sense of. And uh-huh. they go, go figure it out. And then everyone gets trapped in your own head because you don't have like an outlet. You don't have someone to look up to, mm. this, that, and the other. A lot of people will find figures, father figures, mother figures in someone else mm. that's not family. They'll be like, oh, they're like a dad to me. So it's quite obvious that you look to you look at them as a father. Everyone needs someone to look up to. Yeah, like that's a everyone ma- needs it. It's yeah. you def- and the people that are unfortunate and don't grow up with that. That you they always find someone that is like their go to, and it's like oh they they're, they're like a dad to me, you know. And because it's like something we crave, we need that as a kid. Like from a young age, you get taught everything by your parents. From it, it and it hasn't changed for. Ever since humans existed, yeah, all animals are the same. Literally, every animal. I like, is there like, you're born, you're with them, and some of them are only with them for a week, but still, they teach them the basics. Mm. You well, know. Well, you mentioned like sort of made me think about. It. You mentioned last week how you think you crave attention because you didn't get any from your mum growing up. It's not that I didn't get any. It's get just enough. that like I I like I definitely got heaps. It's like, but it was like um, I crave. It's I I don't know. It's like hard to go into because like. It's like pretty personal, but it's just like, I don't know. She's kind of fucked up. Mm. And I think that like the constant fucking up doesn't, you don't realize at the time because it's like, yeah, I got attention and I could go to her and I still could. I love my mom. Everything's perfect now. Um, But the constant like fucking up, eventually you realize when you're older, it's like, oh, the reason I, Re- need reassurance and I crave the female attention was because it's like I'm scared they're gonna fuck up it's so hard to explain I know I know and exactly like I'm starting to realize certain things like why I'm certain ways and like it's something like why am I fucked up because of them and mm. you're like trying to figure your own out life out yeah and I was like trying to trying to make sense of like we figured we figured out why yeah but how do we rewire our brain to just become oddy I'm not having all my parents problems yeah relived through me and i was trying to think like because you got we both have different problems everybody's got their own problems from their parents yeah yeah yeah. and i was trying to think so we figured out why we get it but i was trying to figure out like instead of it coming out through me again and going on a different generation how do i figure out these feelings and these reasons why why i'm fucked up and then get them out of there and become a better person i was thinking it had something to do with like creating a better family or like your own one where it's healthy and that thing just slowly eludes from you because you have a healthy you're a product of the environment, essentially. But like, do you, like your parents didn't like they probably um, picked up stuff from their parents. Exactly, their parents picked up stuff from their parents. And I assume at some point in your parents' life and my parents' life, they both like us had the recognition of you know the reason I do this is because of this in my past. Yeah. And then they probably thought, well, I don't want to pass that down onto my kid, but it's unintentional. Yeah. And it's going to happen, and you're going to pass stuff onto your kids, and they're going to have problems via based off things that you don't even have control of, even though it's you're the one that's implanting the problem. But it's like just a thing that it's just part of human life. So you can you just, this is a part. So it's like, you can do your best, mm. obviously do yeah. your best to be healthy, teach kids everything. But like everyone's going to have problems. Yeah. And a lot of people's problems come from the early years of their life. Mm. And it's just because everyone's still figuring out, like you're, you're still going to be figuring out life when you have a kid. You're not going to have it figured out yet. Oh yeah. No, hundred percent. Well, you know, my, my biggest thing is trying to figure out life yeah so do you think a better way to look at that would just be let's give them minimal problems <laughs> yeah, no. so deal with like just accept what i've got yeah. and then go with that and not try and figure out what i've got yeah just accept it um i'd say so i think yeah like the way i look at it is like whenever i'm thinking ah oh, you know fuck it's because of this you know because of this pro like it's just like oh I, the way I look at life at the moment is just like everything is is what it is. Like everything, I don't know. I make myself feel better by saying someone's got it worse. Mm. I don't know if that's healthy or not. I don't know. I do that as well. But I think definitely just accepting like life is just going to come at you and not everything's in your control. Mm. So it's like you need to deal with it the best you can. So then when you maybe do have a family, at least you can just recognize like, oh no, I th- maybe – just, I don't know. Fuck, it's a good question. I'm too young. <laughs> do you think people think about this? Like, because my thing is like, yeah. If you, do we? Does anyone think like us? When I was thinking about like starting my own family and stuff, or whatever. There's no way I am ready to be like. I'm not enough of a person to have another one learn everything from me. Mm. 
And I was like, I need to build myself, my character, my person. I just need to build everything that makes up Oddie before I do that. Yeah, but what's going to build up Oddie? Time. Time. Imagine, yeah, me, but like Megan, when do you, but is there going to ever be a point where you're like, okay, I'm built up and I'm ready? Like, is that a thing? I, do you well, reckon? I reckon? I think I'll be, well, consider me 18 from now. Yeah. I'm like a fucking completely different person. Yeah, a, lot of, a lot of maturing happens in those five years. And then I reckon from now 23 to I want to have 28. One, 28 is probably when I want to have a kid, maybe. Maybe, yeah. 30s, early 30s. Yeah. I reckon I'll be a fucking way, my mindset will be completely different again. Yeah, do you, but do you think you'll feel, you'll ever feel ready? I think so. Yeah? I like reckon. I'm ready to have a kid. Yeah. I, I feel like I have enough life experience. I'm enough of, it's like I know who Oddie is. Well, all these relationship advice we get and everyone's just like, oh, maybe like he's boring because I want to have fun. This, that, and the other. I'm going to have all of that like done mm. before I consider doing something like that. Yeah, okay. That's my game plan. But I was thinking like, is that my, I know I'm a critical overthinker. Yeah. That's like, it's my worst trait, but also my best. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You, deep, you deep a lot of stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. I'm trying to think like, there's just no real like, dude, what if you fucking get a girlfriend and get her pregnant at 24? Move and to then Mexico. She, and <laughs> did you just say move to Mexico? Yeah. So I just... <laughs> That came out way too quick. But what if you like are in love with this girl and and you she gets pregnant and she's like, Oddie, I, I, I would don't believe in abortion. So you're in love with her. You would, I know you, you would have, you would just say yeah, yes. I yeah, know but, you would. Yeah. So then it's like, are you going to be like, oh fuck, I'm not ready. This kid is just, I'm going to allow this kid to just be fucked up because I'm not ready yet. No, I wouldn't. I'd do my best. Yeah, exactly. But also I'm there for like the, yeah, I guess you're right. But I'm just, it's just funny how like, there is no answer to like any question like this in life. It's just like no, nah, everyone. It's just everyone just does it. It's just like you do it, and there's no reason to do it. Mm. It's so funny that like that's how life is. You know, yeah, it is wild. Eh? You go to school, you go to school until you're 18, and then you're kind of just out in the world, and 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 the world is nothing like school. Nah, like my younger sister, she she's well, she's still in school. But she just got her first job. Yeah. And she's been working there for a few, maybe two months or something. And she has, for the last two weeks, only gotten one shift a week and she's upset about it. Um, and she was complaining about it last night. And I was like, I was like, if you want more, you need to, you need to be up front and ask for more. Yeah. You need to show intuition. You need to say to your boss, Oh, I noticed I've only been getting one shift a week. I would really like more. Can you teach me more th skills so I'm more useful yeah. so you can put me on more? And I guarantee you, you wanting to learn and showing that you want to learn will get you more yeah. and you'll be taught and you'll get more. And she just rolled her eyes at me. <laughs> she's only fucking 15 or 16 and yeah. she it just doesn't know yet. And I would have been the exact same when I was that age. But now you like, she's just learning about life basically. Mm. So I'm trying, I don't know where I was going. I don't know either. You're probably we're talking about how life's different. How you like life's not what you expected at yeah, all. Yeah, life's not what you expected to be. So then, there's no no one can answer any questions for you. Where it's like, basically, do this, do that. This is what you should do. This is what you should do. It's like there's no answer. Yeah, like you said, there's no answer to that question beforehand. Mm. So there's just everyone's just going to go about life and figure it out their own way, and then pass on to their kids what they've learned. Mm -hmm. So that's why everyone's so different and everyone's their own person because everyone interprets things in different ways. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. Well, I've, I was going to say, well, I have all these deep thoughts. So like some people aren't blessed on the gene pool. Like you don't know how life works, mm. this, that and the other. And it all goes around in a circle. But at the end of the day, like that's like what we have to deal with. Mm. And although it's like crazy confusing and like, I think we're doing it well, but every, more people should, people should normalize that like, it's okay to not have money. Like it's okay not to know what you want to do. Mm. It's okay to have a shit spell for a fucking couple months, but that doesn't mean you can't not be happy. Mm. Like at the end of this, like I'm confused about life. I'm confused about everything, but I'm still the happiest I've ever been in my life. Yeah, 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 yeah. But life, but it's like, although we are currently both like, fuck, this is such a, we're in such a cool position. We're both so happy. We are both still figuring out life. Like Literally. life doesn't just get put on hold while you're happy. Mm. And just like now you just get to be happy. Like you, need, you still need to like learn stuff and everything. Like we are going through seriously the biggest learning curve of our life currently oh, yeah. behind the scenes. Literally. And like I was just, I was talking to dad about it yesterday and he's even like, yeah, I just like, I was asking him for advice and he's like, 
I mean, I can do my best, but I don't know. And I was like, that's the thing is Oddie and I don't know anyone to ask. Yeah. We don't know anyone because we're the only people we know that have tried this because we're not in the industry. Like we just started from obviously mm-hmm. nothing. And then, so, I mean, right now we, yeah. I, don't f- it's just, I think it's just normalizing that it's okay to be confused. Mm. It's okay to be fucking have a shit gym. It's okay to have everything bad. But at the end of the day, happiness is a choice. Mm-hmm. And that's, there's a few quotes that like I reckon this is last finale. There's a few quotes that I reckon we could take from this pod- podcast. Mm-hmm. Biggest one for us is happiness is a choice. Yep. Transparency is hot. Yep. Is there anything else? There are main two. Transparency is hot. Happiness is a choice. And? Um, you don't make friends with salad. You don't make friends with salad. So that's a Homer Simpson and quote. <laughs> do what you want to do. Be what you want to be. Relatable. Yeah, baby. Simple as that. Life is the most confusing and like annoying thing to deal with. But that's what makes it exciting. Literally. Woo-hoo-hoo. Quick, end it. <laughs> Do what you want to do. Be what you want to be. Relatables. Okay, guys. Uh, to finish off this episode. Finish off the last the episode. The last episode of season, season two. two. It's quite emotional for... It's a very emotional thing. Who knows? We may st- we may come back to this studio. We may come back to it painted. Yeah. You don't know what we'll do. <laughs> you don't know what we'll do. You we'll, never know with we us. We like to keep you guys on, our, on your toes. We do, we do. But... So we want to end off the potty with a fucking beautiful message that yeah. kind of, I think we, what we screams to be like relatables. Yeah. It's what, what we are. What we are. So I genuinely don't know if I can find the right words for this, but just a huge thank you for this podcast. I recently graduated university and have zero clue on what I want to do with my life and I've been in a downward spiral, but your short, deep combos at the end just make me realize it's all okay and I'll be fine just takes patience one of my favorite quotes i think you will both enjoy is for what it's worth it's never too late or in any case too early to be whoever you want to be there's no time limit stop whenever you want you can change or stay the same there are no rules for this thing we can make the best or the worst of it i hope you make the best of it and i hope you see the things i hope you see things that startle you I hope you feel things that you've never felt before. I hope you meet people with a different point of view. I hope you live a life you're proud of. If you find that you're not, I hope you have the courage to start all over again. Literally. Literally, that's like us to a T. That was fucking... That's insane. Yeah. Like, honestly, the reason we started this podcast is start conversations around mental health. Mm -hmm. To normalize that it's okay to not know what you want to do. Mm -hmm. It's okay to be lost. Yep. And like at the have end, have fun. The, have fun. It's meant. It's everything is have fun. We want to make it put a smile on your face. Mm-hmm. And um, I think it's working a little bit. And like it's just end the season. I want to say a big thank you to everyone who listens. Definitely, this and has like, been a big season. Big season. Probably this has been our best season for sure. Easily. And um, we're just appreciative of every single one of you. And like hopefully, like end of this potty anyway. You just switch off and like smile yeah that's, we, that's, that's all that, we want that's all we want yeah we want you to listen to it and think that wasn't a waste of time <laughs> <laughs> and just smile so this week yeah we're gonna end it off with go subscribe like bloody rate it do whatever you want we love you all we appreciate everything and the song of the week is stay alive by jose gonzalez enjoy yourself guys it's a beautiful song and um are we having a week off or not eh? Nah. Nah. So next week. I was going to say, listen to that on repeat. You don't have to because we're not fucking going anywhere. We'll see you in Bali. (laughs) (laughs) See you guys. See ya.